Hello, and welcome to Recipes with Ben. With pumpkin spice season being well underway, about a month ago I started the process of brewing a pumpkin spice latte stout. The flavor profile I was aiming for was a sweet stout that had the right balance of spices, coffee, and then some roasty notes to complement the beer. So stick around the end to see how it turns out. Let me know down in the comments what is your go-to fall beer. To start the brew day, I'm going to heat up 3.8 gallons of reverse osmosis water to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That I will then adjust the water profile with some brewing salts. And the water profile will be listed in the description of this video. Once the water got up to temp, I removed 0.7 gallons that will be used for rinsing the grain later after the mash. I did this so that all the water had the same water profile. Next, let's talk about grains for the stout. I'm using 73% American Turo for the base malt, followed by 5% chocolate malt and 2% roasted barley to give this stout a roasty backbone. I'm also going to add 5% flaked oats for head retention and body, and lastly, 15% crystal 40 for some malty sweetness to balance out the roasted barley. With all this grain, I'm aiming for an original gravity of 1.071 and a final gravity of 1.021 to make this beer 7.8%. The brew method I'm gonna use is the brew in the bag method. And so when I bought the grains, I made sure to double crush them at the brew store so I could try to increase the overall efficiency of the brew day. I'm gonna add all the grains to the mash tun and stir it with my spoon to eliminate any dough balls that may have been formed while adding the grains to the hot water. Because this is a pumpkin beer, I'm also gonna add two cans of pumpkin puree into the mash with the grains. And after mashing for five minutes, I want to check the pH of the mash to make sure it's in the right range. I used my spoon to take some of the liquid out and using a pH meter to check the pH, it was a little on the higher end, reading 5.77. So I need to adjust it with some lactic acid to bring it down. Now I did make one math mistake when determining how much lactic acid to add to bring that pH down, as I calculated it for the total volume that I started with as 3.8 gallons instead of the 3.1 that I had in the mash ton during the mash. So when I added in the lactic acid, it dropped the pH down to 5.0. So then I added several additions of calcium carbonate to bring the pH back up to 5.2. This was a pretty tedious process as I had to add a spoonful at a time, wait for a few minutes, recheck it, then rinse and repeat until I hit the correct mash, stirring every time I added the calcium carbonate in. Finally, I got the mash pH to the right range at 5.2, but after one hour, it was time to check the starch conversion. And to test for this, you add lingual solution to the to a little bit of the wart, and if it's negative, it will say the same color, which is somewhere between orange and yellow, but if starch are still present, meaning they're not fully converted, they would be a bluish black color. With mash done, I increased the temp to 178 for mash out, and once I hit that temp, I removed the grain bag and placed it in my oversized colander to allow the liquid to drain into my other kettle. Once it was done draining, I rinsed it with about a half a gallon of the reserved water that I had heated up in an electric kettle, and using a thermometer I measured I monitored it to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I squeezed the grain bag using the lid of the brew kettle and added all that to the kettle I'm going to use for the boil. In total, I started the boil with 3.1 gallons of wort, and from that I collected a small sample to see what my pre-boil gravity was. I typically place this in the freezer to cool it down and then using the temperature adjustment to get the gravity. So the pre-boil gravity came in at 1.050 at 99 degrees Fahrenheit, and after a temperature correction, it was 1.054. Now that the wort is up to a boil, it's time for our one and only hop addition, which is one ounce of Fuggles, and this is going in at the start of a 60 minute boil. Then after 15 minutes, it was time for the addition of spices, which included cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg. And then to give the beer a sweet finish, I'm going to add 0.3 pounds of lactose into the wort. I've had issues in the past with burning sugars when adding it to the kettle directly, so the best method I have found is to take out some of the hot wort and place the lactose in a jar and then pre-dissolve it by stirring it and then pour it slowly back into the kettle. Also, just to make complete sure that I didn't burn and scorch the bottom of the kettle, I turned off the heat when adding the lactose solution back into the kettle. After all the lactose have been added in, I turned 
heat back on and added the wort chiller in for the last 10 minutes of the boil to help sanitize this before cooling the wort down to my pitching temperature. I normally use my stainless steel bucket fermenter, but that was being used for another fermentation. So I'm using a three gallon glass carboy that I have that I cleaned and sanitized beforehand. The only reliable method I found to transfer from the kettle to the carboy is using a siphon. So I pulled off a sample while I wasn't transferring at this time to get an original gravity, which was 1.080, which was almost a whole point higher than I expected. But with the two-ish gallons of beer, I was okay with this. Now for the yeast I chose for this stout, I'll be using WLP013 or London Ale yeast because of the fermentation range, which is between 66 and 71, which is the perfect temperature to place in my basement, as I don't have a way of temperature controlling yet. I placed the yeast in a packet in a sanitized solution and then pitched one packet of yeast into the wort. I shook it to aerate it and finally placed an airlock on top. When I came back the next morning, fermentation was off to the races with a healthy airlock activity. I let this hang out in my basement for three weeks to finish off fermentation before kegging. Now I mentioned in the beginning I wanted to add coffee to this beer, and there are several methods I've seen for adding coffee. First is you could just brew a hot cup of coffee and add it directly after cooling it down into the beer. Or you could grind the beans and steep that in some kind of mesh bag in a keg or a secondary fermenter over a couple days at a lower temperature. But for me, I'm going to make a cold brew concentrate as it's the easiest for me. So the first step was to heat up some filtered water to boil and then add that into a mason jar. After sealing it closed, I let it cool down completely. This was kind of help sanitize the water in the solution before adding it to the final beer. For this batch, I'm going to use 410 milliliters of filtered water and then it was time to weigh out the coffee. So I'm going to use 40 grams of decaffeinated coffee that I ground on the course of setting in my coffee grinder, which is typically for a French press. Then I poured the grounds into the filtered water and I realized at this point I probably should have chosen a different size jar with a little more head space. But so I just, to make it all fit, I just sanitized a spoon, stirred it around, and the coffee ended up fitting after two additions of adding the coffee. I let this sit out at room temperature for 24 hours before adding it into the keg directly. To remove the coffee from the grinds, I poured it over a sanitized strainer into a sanitized mason jar, and then purged the clean keg with CO2 before adding the coffee directly into that. And I finally added a teaspoon of vanilla extract to the keg and purged again with CO2 to kind of remove any oxygen that could have gotten in there in the transfer. And then it was time to rack the beer into the keg. After several minutes using the siphon to transfer the beer from the glass fermenter to the keg, I reserved only a small amount of sample to take for the final gravity reading. And I purged the keg again at about 10 PSI, and then for serving, I increased the PSI to 15 and placed that in the fridge to cool down and carbonate fully before I served it. The final gravity of the beer came out at 1.022, giving this beer an ABV of 7.6%. That also means that the yeast had an attenuation of 71%, which is just right in the range with the WLP013. After letting it condition in the fridge for a few days, it was time to pour myself a glass and see how it turned out. So let's get to the taste. All right, so what we have here is my attempt at a pumpkin spice latte inspired stout. So in the boil for the spices, I added cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg. And then for, uh, to give it that little bit of sweetness, I added some lactose into the boil as well. And then after fermenting for three weeks, I made a cold brew concentrate, which I added directly to the keg, purged, and then also added in some vanilla extract to kind of round out the beer. Uh, yeah, so it came in at about like 7%, or like 71% attenuation, which is pretty good. So right off the head, right off the start, you can see a nice thick foam. If we look at the color. It's very, very dark. Some places it almost looks like chocolatey, milk chocolatey, but darker than that. Let's see what we get on the aroma. Get like a little bit of roastiness, a lot of like milk chocolate sweetness. It's 
starts out with that nice like, hey buddy, what you want to help? You want? So it starts out with that nice like kind of cinnamon roastiness that comes with it, a little bit of like the bitter coffee. Then it's got that like finish of like syrupy sweetness that I like. I would say there's not a strong flavor of the spice or the coffee. So I think in general, I could have doubled or maybe tripled the spice and concentrated down the coffee. I think another way I've seen, which I'd probably test another time I make a coffee beer, is where you actually grind the coffee coarsely, put that in the keg, let it sit cold for a couple days. It's kind of let the you know beer extract out the flavor versus making it concentrate. But I think overall, if you're trying to rate this, on the scale, I think this is definitely more of like a sweet stout with a little bit of the um, subtle notes from the spice. I think it's very you know, easy to drink. It is boozy. It does hit you because it's like 7%. It doesn't have that like sweet boozy flavor you associate with say like a quad or something like that or an imperial stout. It is good though. It's got a nice head retention which comes from the oats. So overall, I think this is a good... Um, attempt at making a pumpkin spice latte stout uh, beer, but I definitely think if you want looking for a way to increase the quality of this beer, you know, doing something where you increase the spiciness um, and then also just increase the coffee, the vanilla, everything to kind of up that level of baseline. But I think the overall beer without any of that is fine. It's good. I would definitely brew this again. I think being better, closer to a better stout. Yeah, but overall, I think this, this beer is pretty good. I would definitely drink this again, or sorry, I would definitely brew this again. So if you find this helpful on the brew day to now, you know, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below how you think, any improvements you think would make this beer better or future stout or a pumpkin spice beer. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. I'll see you again soon. Cheers.